Today we're gonna make this cool isometric hacker room in Blender 3.0. Hello guys and welcome to another Blender tutorial. So start your Blender and have your default cube. Uh, delete the camera and delete the light. We will add our own lights and all that later. Today we're gonna be making an isometric room. So let's create our base. We're gonna use our default cube. We don't need to delete that pop this out so that you can see the values okay so we have to make the floor square so whatever this value is it will be equal to this this value so let's say give this four and this also be four i don't want the floor to be this thick maybe slightly less okay this looks fine uh, control s to save your project let's say i'm gonna name this isometric room uh two okay that should do it all right so let's begin so first thing to do is actually pull out the walls before we do that we want to apply the scale on it blender likes app apply application of a scale because uh in that way it behaves nicer every time we do something we always make sure we apply the scale to it and sometimes even the rotation if needed so go into edit mode uh, loop cut make a very thin loop cut like this not too much not too much i don't want the walls to be thin just a little bit okay that's about right okay now what we need to do is uh, select our face mode select this couple of faces and we're going to extrude them what is extrude extrude means uh, extrapolating these faces upwards or extending them like this when i click this button extrude region we can pull this hold and pull this and this will allow us to make the wall and that's why we create the loop cut so don't make the walls really big it will look uh, unproportionate uh, not so proportionate so make it somewhere around this this is the, this is fine this is fine okay so go back to your edit mode and take a look how does it look okay this looks all right to me so let's get started the first thing we're gonna do is have our window on this side so mesh uh, add a, a cube into it and place your cube where your window would be so for example right about here enlarge it like this too much okay that looks about right and now we're gonna use this object to cut a hole into the our main object to do that click on this and go into modifier tab it's right about right here modifier tab and create find boolean once boolean is found select this object make sure your operation operand type is object and click this button what it does is actually makes a hole in it in order to preview that you can just click this button and it will hide the object in the viewport and this is how the finished uh, object would look yeah so as you can see uh, we may need to move it a little bit lower it looks awkward uh, it's all about proportions it's all about proportions and looking from a distance so that's why most isometric stuff is low poly because if you have high polygon and high detailed models when you zoom out it's gonna look all messy so it's ha better to have like a smaller details okay so in order to apply this just go here go into your modifier that you have just created boolean modifier and apply once you apply you'll see nothing happens that's because the hole has been created and our object is still there in order to see it just delete the object that's it now you have a window for your room okay so let's keep going so now what we want to do is uh, make a desk so add another cube this is mostly called box modeling because it's actually everything made with boxes. You can use other stuff, but basically all you need is all these primitives to make almost anything in 3D. 
complex stuff will require sculpting which will not cover in this tutorial but i'll try to in some future tutorials for now let's just finish this isometric room because i don't want this tutorial to be very long short and precise so that you guys well your time is valuable to me okay so apply the scale on this as well and go into edit mode and loop cut again right about here and go into face select and move this one and oh we need to extrude this sorry we will extrude this just like this okay now this this is gonna be our table for the computer okay this is gonna be our table for the computer but uh, to make it look slightly better i want these edges to be beveled so how do you do that uh, click here the to go into edge mode in your edit mode the middle one the long striped one select your selection tool and select the following edges like this this edge this edge and this edge only the edges we are going to bevel and then go into click once on the bevel and a top dialog is gonna appear how many segments it will use to subdivide the bevel so make it like say six and hold and slowly drag this now you can see it taking shape okay we are gonna go somewhere around here and that's about it okay now we have a nice table that we can place our computer in so uh, let's bring another box and let's continue so before we do that i think we need some legs for this table otherwise it will look like uh, it's gonna fall off or something so make let's make some fake legs now in 3d intersecting geometry like this is bad but it's all right for low polygon modeling and almost we say intersecting geometry is bad in 3d but in reality we use a lot of intersecting geometry in a lot of places okay and well for rendering as long as it doesn't bother the render most of the time it's fine so place it somewhere along here duplicate this and you can control c control v or uh, use whatever shortcut you have to copy paste this just make a duplicate of this i use ctrl v but that's because i am in industry standard control in blender i have shifted from cinema 4d and that's why i'm comfortable with industry standard controls you can do pretty much everything in just different shortcuts other to the blender okay so duplicate this once more and bring it somewhere around here and bring it front because when your camera is out of reach it's gonna look like this and that's all you're gonna get these legs if if they're placed close together will look like uh like they're one single object we don't want that okay now save now what we're gonna do is go into uh make another say what we're gonna do is make a laptop right about here and we are going to make a desktop right about here a dual screen desktop and a laptop right about here a shelf here hopefully so you can either bring in another object or you already have a cube in the scene in the form of a leg you can just reuse this okay okay so just turn in turn this into a simple shelf a very simple shelf don't make it too complex because uh, low poly model isometric modeling is all about keeping the bigger picture with small amounts of details you can pretty much zoom out and check every time so we're gonna have a shelf here and we're gonna have a small shelf here and now this shelf so that it doesn't look like they're floating in empty space what we are going to do is simply uh, connect them to the wall using a small another object so let's see it will seem like they're connected actually 
so make something very thin and small like this and rotate this and attach it to the wall and the object and bring it outside now this will look like it's let's see ah, okay it doesn't look very much defined like I said you can't really see it so bring it front again and bring it slightly inside that looks about okay duplicate this right about here uh, right about here and duplicate this once more and duplicate this once more okay for the sake of simplicity what you can do is select all three and create select join and select all three and select join this way when we need to move it somewhere else or move its height or something else we don't have to redo everything so we are keeping it parallel to the window on this at least the top frame of it okay we're gonna play some books and stuff and like or something else later here but for now let's create the LCD and fill our desk So we're going to make our first monitor right about here. And we're going to push it in. We're going to push it in to the wall. You're going to have a really large screen on the wall that will have a terminal on it. And we'll have the keyboard mouse here. Uh, for example, if he's running a cloud server somewhere and this is just here. So right now what we're going to do is make a frame out of it. We're going to make it a bit wide just like this. Okay, that looks big enough. That is in reality a really big monitor and an expensive one. Okay. So apply a scale to that. Apply the scale to it and go into edit mode. And we are going to select the inset face. This face. Face mode inset face okay we're gonna insert it something like this right now all monitors are bezel-less I know but in uh, 3d if you do bezel-less screens it will look very odd because well definition is everything right so you must have defined shapes and this shape clearly you can see it from a distance and now oh, okay it's either a mirror or a screen as soon as i put the materials in and the text and all that stuff in this will look start to look like a screen again okay so this is looking all right so what we're gonna do is start making our keyboard so let's copy the leg again man i'm using too much of the leg place it somewhere around there make it bigger make it a keyboard size make it that is not a keyboard size that is way more than a keyboard size here we go here we go make it smaller something like this something like this would do something like this would do maybe he's a minimalist guy we never know okay so add object apply a scale again and go into edit mode and select insert face insert the face like this and extrude again and pull it on the pull it down so that it creates a small cavity like this okay so now what we're gonna do is start making buttons on this the easiest method to do this is just copy the leg again and make buttons separately we can actually subdivide and make the buttons right here but it will take much more time and it will not be and our keyboard layout is not uniform so it will look odd so right now all we need to do is define it's a keyboard you don't actually have to make a keyboard here okay just have enough buttons so we run we're running to a problem where uh, our shading isn't correct to see this I know we haven't applied any materials so actually you can make the blender shading much better all you have to do is go here 
and click on cavity and click on world and uh, click on shadows and act, reduce the shadows a little and you can act, you can actually have a much better ui now see it is starting to look like something from cinema 4d now and the outlines are clearly defined and stuff okay so duplicate the buttons have a very good spacing and once you have like three copied you should like really copy this upwards three rows are fine space them nicely like this and we know the space bar is normally huge okay so let's copy this again put it here let's copy all this just like this and copy this too right over here and right now what we need to do is have a, another defined shape for example we usually on the keyboard have this gap here and our some buttons about here here is usually what happens is the dub, uh, arrow arrow keys usually lie here we can rearrange this really here we go we can also like be nice and make something like this if it's it if it if it's like too much to the right we can like center it a little okay see it looks starting to look like a keyboard now what i need to do is if we move if we need to move it it will be a lot of hassle but we're gonna do it later for now we have made the keyboard and right now and now we need to make the mouse and the mouse pad so let's first make the mouse pad enlarge it you know what a mouse pad looks like just make it that is not a mouse pad that looks like a book a large book okay so uh, here is what you do you apply the scale again object apply wait maybe i can maybe this is more like it okay so apply the scale to it again and we bevel out the corners because mouse pads are usually rounded has rounded corners See, you have to do the shapes that people remember these objects uh, with for example mouse pad has a round shapes keyboard has a square shapes like those okay click on bevel uh, reduce the segment to like four that's good enough and just go about here now you have a nice mouse pad okay now let's make the mouse so duplicate this right about here and what we need to do is increase this like this okay just make a, a small brick okay the mouse is huge i need to reduce its size that's that's looks about right okay so in order to do the mouse first what we need to do is give it a shape give it a, let's uh, go into our edit mode and let's create a loop cut right about here and we're gonna make another loop cut right about here now what we're gonna do is go into our select tool and select this edge and we're gonna pull it upwards a little like this and we're gonna select this edge and pull it down a little so that it starts to look like a mouse you know we can refine the things later once we're like almost there so uh, let's uh, let's not do that let's pull this back a little bit like this and uh, let's pull the upward edges close together again so select these edges and do the scale tool here and just pull it towards just like this just like this okay from a distance it will look like a mouse well, it look a big really big mouse so in order to clear the shape what we need to do is go into our 
uh, subdivision modifier subdivision surface and here we go it starts to look like a mouse but we're not gonna subdivide that much okay we're just gonna do it level one so in that case it still look like a mouse so it has it has become a little bit too small to see from a distance so we'll need to increase the scale altogether let's do that let's increase it this way a little and this way a little and hide a little bit okay now that looks like a mouse for an ogre or a really big human being all right that starts to look like a mouse okay this is fine so we keep it that way and what we we are done with the mouse and see this is a wireless keyboard and mouse we don't need to do anything anymore to it okay so once that's done what we're gonna do is save our project again and uh, we're gonna get another cube I guess we have we run out of cube yes we have oh no we're gonna use the legs again so we're gonna copy this cube over to this wall I want to have a nice poster of say mm, Batman or Superman or say Julian Assange or I don't know somebody profound like our overlord from Apple or something here I want to have a nice poster here that makes a statement okay how about three small posters right here but visible enough from a distance so what we're gonna do is scale it scale to like this yeah this much we're gonna we want it to be smaller than the our monitor but bigger than um, a small poster so that it, it can be clearly seen from a distance okay so once that's done we're gonna copy this over here you know what there's just enough space for two of them really so let's just do this yeah two posters that's good enough okay so let's start te texturing we're gonna do a lot more to this thing but right now we need to get the textures down because we need to see how it starts to look so but before that what we need to do is add a chair so i'm gonna just use a very basic chair okay so what we're gonna do is bring in a say a cube again you know what i'm gonna use the leg again so what we're gonna do is copy this oh i copy this right about here and we're gonna enlarge this this way we're gonna reduce its height we're gonna thin it out we're gonna pull it down make a loop cut on the object right about here so that we can extrude this face out where our where we'll actually sit right about here where our buttocks will be so here we go here we go okay and now we're gonna add the legs but that's a bit later first we need to make this chair not look like a laptop okay or like a medieval one we want it to be slightly better so we're gonna do that by uh, going into our selection tool and pull this back a little like this and we're gonna introduce some subdivision edges right about here put one about here and put one about here these edges will prevent our subdivision from carving too much so go into again into your modifier tab and add subdivision surface and now it starts to look a lot better okay so as we increase the subdivision level on the viewport so we're gonna see these strange uh, artifacts here okay that's because it's not smoothing enough and it does still look like a Star Trek chair at this point so we don't want that Star Trek bridge command chair if you haven't played that game there is an amazing game you should you just you, should, you guys if you're a Star Trek fan play the Star Trek bridge commander it's fine okay so okay go into vertex mode 
going to vertex mode going to select mode select these few vertices vertices and bring them close together how about the corner ones as well like this and bring them close together so that it makes this nice shape yeah and maybe select these ones as well there are other ways to do this without touching the vertex you can also go into for example we can do this and it'll do this this is what we want but you don't have to do it in vertex mode sometimes selecting all these points is tough so what we do sometimes is just go into our face select mode select the faces and just do this it does the same thing almost the same thing yeah okay but i think working with uh, faces is much easier than working with vertexes but that's just my opinion some people like to work more with vert vertexes so we're gonna reduce the slant on this a little we do that by introducing a <clears throat> going to our edge mode and introducing another loop right about here and another one right about here okay right now what we're gonna do is select the going to face mode again selection mode and pull this a little so that it makes this nice shape wow it's starting to look like a modern furniture okay no. should it should this should i do this like this or should this be flat i don't know really so let's just do the, do a little bit of this okay all right so now it starts to look like mm, something all right i'm gonna pull this whole thing right here you see some cross pattern happening which we don't want so let's select this cross patterns out and let's see actually what's going on it's actually selection problem and not really a okay yeah just gently shape it out shape it out just gently shape it out so that it looks like a nice chair that's it okay so now we're going to add the legs so let's go into our edit mode if we shade smooth it looks all right it looks all right but there are broken edges everywhere so we're going to fix that So as we pulled it, well, let me undo that one. As we pull this one, this face, this face is intersected with this face because we pulled it on the top using this. And this is what happened. When we did this, it intersected the geometry, the front face, this, this part of the face, this face intersected with this face. That's why it did that thing. So we don't want that. So what we do is we do pull it back like we needed needed to to give that shape that's fine but once it's there we're gonna pull the back one and pull it like this no that's not gonna happen so we're gonna select this one this this other face gonna be created and we're gonna slightly what we're gonna do is rotate this rotate this a little so that it doesn't merge with the rear face here we go here we go here we go this will also also introduce some thickness to it okay so all right all the horrible edges seem to be slowly going away that's what we want that's what we want okay select the top face can we go a bit harder on this yeah okay so all right so now that's once that's done uh, now we need to i think we should reduce these two edges a bit more when they're a bit too extreme there okay maybe along with this okay all right so now let's do the legs the whole idea of this is to exercise this model making this model and another thing to learn is that not to spend too, in low poly modeling 
if you spend too much time modeling one thing you're gonna end up uh, wasting way too much time and not finishing your project in time and that's bad you should be able to do one of these every day every day and that's a good practice that's what polygon runway did they check out his channel it's a great channel i learned a lot from that so anyway what i did here is copy another uh, leg from here as i always do and i have just made this tiny thing okay and we're gonna rotate this how do i okay we're gonna rotate this and making it intersect with our going to local right here uh, instead of global so that we can use the bent one okay so just we're gonna intersect the geometry a little bit but not too much on the floor okay and we're gonna go into our global and copy this let's check out what angle this is at so 17.6 let's do 20 instead and make this negative 20 that will keep our uh, angle symmetric okay ah, this looks all right so all we need to do is copy this on the front and now you have a nice minimalistic chair okay now from a orthographic view if we keep this like this uh, it will it doesn't look that like nice so what we do is rotate this a little and push it back here so that you can see that somebody was working in here and he like went to get some drinks or something okay you can put your own variation in you don't have to follow it follow this tutorial to the letter it's all about experimenting and learning like right now i'm like looking at this and be like okay the legs doesn't look connected and stuff so i'm gonna do something to make it look more uh, connected because oh okay let's go into our local because uh, that's what makes a believable space the whole idea of 3d is to make a believable space that's what most um, 3d architects are well trained in making believable spaces that's what many game developers are trained in making believable spaces okay this looks like one of these chairs when you trip on it it hurts real bad like you go owie like family guy okay so that that looks all right maybe maybe one here and one there would do need to match this thing's angle properly the fun with low polygon modeling is that you can like eyeball so many things and it still look good yeah into our global so that we can do it this way pull it this way intersect go into our local again so that we can move it properly like this and angle it okay and bring it out down a little just like this okay all right that looks all right okay Keep working until you're happy with it but remember I keep telling you don't spend too much time on each thing you can like refine everything later as well okay so since that's done let's save our project that looked like a unique chair though okay and uh, what we need to do right now is we did the chair we did the thing and now what we need to do is well bring it all in so in order to do that i want to have a window here with glass and everything for that what we need to do is copy one of our legs again that's, that's the only cue we have in the scene okay so have it as a frame okay increase its height have it as a frame If we create a frame 
this will be the frame for, for the window and this will be the middle point this will be the left increase it a little usually the uh, outer frames are a bit bigger like this and copy it over here and copy another one on top rotate this 90 degrees It's very relaxing to do modeling like this and creating tutorials. It's fun, you guys should try. I think tutorial is a great way to giving back to the community. And I have learned so much for tutorials and since I am, uh, I know a couple of tricks here and there, I thought why not share it with everybody else? And isn't, isn't the, the tech community, is that what it's all about? I mean, we should be sharing and caring for each other. While I see that people are getting crypto scammed everywhere left and right it is it's just not right it's destroying it's technology gone berserk and just destroying society and like the trust people have on technology is like it's gonna be hard to get back once like all this settles okay so since they're all the same size they're gonna be intersecting geometry a little so what you do is you create the frame a little bit bigger so that it looks like a window can be opened or something okay increase the frames this way a little bit okay and that's about it we're gonna create another one and we're gonna make it really small this is gonna be our glass sometimes intersecting geometry is much better and I am a veteran game dev is much better than uh, say multiple objects multiple objects usually the amount of trouble you're gonna get for in the geometry is much lower than you're gonna have for say multiple geometry multiple geometry gonna cost more cpu and everything in the long run it is more objects to track for the computer okay so we're gonna give this thing a glass a glass as material but we're gonna do that a bit later okay so that's our scene now we don't have any books on our shelves right so let's add some books this time you can already see what I'm gonna copy yes that's right I'm gonna copy a table leg that's what I do that's what I live for I copy table legs for a living mm -hmm. you don't like it well Ah, what can I do? Wow, this looks like a cereal box and not a book. Should this? Mm, no. Well, hackers don't read books. They just do what they do. Sometimes they do read books, but it's usually on their computer. Anyway, none of my concern, you know. Maybe this is a nerdy hacker. You never know. <laughs> Maybe this is an offensive security guy. That needs to read books and stuff, and you know, maybe these are not hacking books. Maybe these are just his animes. Okay, so we're gonna keep a bit of a distance between the books so that the shadows and everything works. It's for it's on purpose, and we're gonna make this last one slide a bit more than usual, like this, because that's what we usually see in bookshelves, right? And we're gonna not give it a uniform uh, go into local mode every time you change you have to like on its own exist like different height like all books ain't gonna be same height right okay so put your own variation in it'll be fun all right so what we're gonna do is copy one of these right about here and copy another one just to create some variation and on the side as well like this and then we are gonna pull one of those here set rotation to say 90 degrees 
and put one on the shelf like this because sometimes people are lazy and do it this way too wow this is starting to look like vhs tapes maybe he has some vhs tapes maybe he watches cowboy bebop you never know okay so once that's done so what we're gonna do is well we're gonna put a plant right here we're gonna detail it out soon but uh, let's go with texturing let's begin texturing first okay we're gonna fix it a bit more slightly later but let's start texturing okay go into your viewport shading mode and select scene world no select scene light it's fine it's too much strength that's what's going on and there is no uh, object in here just put the strength to say here put world opacity like this just so that it looks slightly better and go into your if settings and select ambient occlusion select bloom select screen space reflection and click on refraction save the project and now we're going to start creating material so the first material we're going to create is the material on the floor so in order to do that select a material we're going to call this base material okay which is the base right now for everything anywhere you select you will see that there is no material since the floor has a material we're going to call it the base material on top of that we're going to create another material called the floor material which is going to be our actual floor material we're going to actually find a texture for that a seamless texture we can put in okay so in order to apply this let's go to our uh, youtube tab and let's go to say uh, seamless wood texture floor seamless wood texture floor here we go find one that's like looks all right and you'll be happy with just get that one you don't you can change it later you don't have to be extremely picky picky about it but i'm gonna go with say you have to understand colors and context as well you know yeah this looks all right texture box okay so we're gonna download this texture and once it's done we're gonna apply this so this this, this texture has ambient occlusion and everything i have downloaded this from texturebox.com you can find you don't need to have all this but it's good to have all this if you want all the details in it and i'm just gonna download this and come back to you guys so we're back and uh I have downloaded all the materials here and as you can see I'll leave the download uh, location on the description and uh, once you have all these files uh, we're gonna use them for our materials on the floor so how do you do that first what we do is uh, <coughs> we have already created floor material the material and what we do is go into base color and go into image texture once you have the image texture click on open and it will take you to image texture and look for the wood texture file we have downloaded and apply it so once you do that you'll save whatever you do save okay so once you do that you'll see that nothing appears that's because we haven't assigned this wood floor to the floor actually to the floor so go into your edit mode uh, click on <clears throat> face mode click on the floor and click assign click on the floor material and click assign now you have the floor but you can see that the floor isn't is very stretched it has stretched the image and deformed it so what do you do is click everything select everything and uv unwrap once you unwrap and just give it a smart uv project once that's done you're gonna see the texture get a slightly better but this is not we, this is not what we want from a distance it will look like wood but we want to uh, decrease the pattern of it and well increase the pattern of it so what we do is go into uv shading once we're in the uv shading 
okay so we increase this a little so that we go into our shading mode and we'll see that this floor is assigned to only this small portion of the actual uh, pattern so what we can do is hold this shift hold this we can drag the patterns into the whole thing like this and voila now it looks much better okay so we can select all these and decrease the size because we are doing an isometric scene we want it to be like slightly bigger than they're there in real life in real life it will be like this so <clears throat> slightly better be slightly bigger like like just like this okay so once that's done we're going to object mode and our floor is starting to look good now we have also downloaded some other <clears throat> normal maps and height maps and everything we're going to plug those in now normally if you download a texture you don't need to do all that uh, typical isometric scene doesn't need all that you can use a plain color as well but i have seen that using some textures gives it a bit more uh, like highlight okay so now what we do is simply plug those in so we go into our shading <clears throat> And in our principal BSDF, you will see that we have our image texture that we created plugged into our base color. Okay. Now we're going to do the metallic. So what we do is actually we want to control our metallic. All these three roughness, specular and metallic we can control. As we can see, this is just a plain material saying how much it will give you just a single value so all we need is the normal map and the maybe height map okay so we're gonna get the normal map drag this on here and it will appear and select it and select on say <clears throat> it's a normal map where is highlight normal map here we go now you have applied the normal map okay now it will take blender for a little bit of time to like apply this now once normal map is applied you can actually see a small fragments and stuff if you get up real close okay but uh, for a, from a distance it won't look that nice we just add it to just uh, for a for learning purpose normal map and the color that's all we need okay and then we go into our modeling or layout mode save okay and our floor is ready now i want some reflections on the floor so for that we increase the metallic a bit will make it a bit more dark but it's fine just a little bit and we're going to increase our specular so that it reflects more and reduce the uh, here we go here we go it it's starting to look like a much polished uh say floor yeah but we don't want it to be too shiny so that uh, it like reflects everything and doesn't look nice when we have an isometric view we can fix all that before rendering but for now how about just a little bit okay that's that looks about all right okay now since we're done with the floor we're gonna do these two sides click both of these and go into your materials <clears throat> Go into your materials select floor material and click assign and once you assign you're gonna see that it has also applied this on both sides it's actually all right to keep it like this but it looks very like rough it's like non-uniform there is an edge there there's an edge there and all that so how do we take care of this okay click on it go into uv shade uv editing and what we need to do is go up close to this so that we can fix it properly and select these two points see it has made it very thin so and go about like this and once it's done maybe you can rotate this it's very much depends on your texture so remember that yeah that looks about all right this is this is something this is this is all right for this bit you don't have to be very accurate though although it's not never bad to be accurate it always pays off okay we cannot stretch that that far it looks horrible 
so what we're gonna do is take all of this and put it somewhere that has a single piece of wood okay now that's all right we're gonna select it here select all of this bring it down select these two tiny vertices make it a little bit bigger select all this rotate this rotate this select a single piece of wood so that it looks nice okay and now we are done with the floor now we are into object mode and we are that lo it, it looks all right so our floor is ready once that is done what we're gonna do now is apply some colors on the walls so what can we apply similarly now we're gonna look for a say <clears throat> the wall can be uh, any color you like or a texture you can apply this any however you like uh, for example I want this wall to be a color let's see what color goes with a dark nice wood floor uh, hmm. let's go into our browser and let's see what we can find so okay so uh, right let's see how about a cement texture seamless I don't know if this will look good on the wall but it's all right or how about a minimalist wallpaper for the whole for the entire wall that will look good too something like this yeah something like this okay or we can also do basically wallpaper you know real wallpapers that people put on the wall wallpaper pattern yeah for example uh, we can take this and we can apply this so let's open this up let's download this you can just get any old wallpaper that'll do just, just fine so we got this wallpaper and what we need to do is same we need to click on it go into our object mode and create another material underneath it remember the order of the material is very important if we put this floor material over our base material like this okay it's not gonna happen but if you didn't apply it to the floor just the floor it's gonna take over the whole thing okay for example <clears throat> so uh, now let's do the walls so let's call this wall material wall material okay once you have the wall material what we're gonna do is uh, use our select mode and click here and we're gonna assign our wall material after that we can go to our image texture where is image texture image texture and since we don't have image texture, it has turned black so go into open and I have used it on downloads so let's see where is it ah here it is okay so we have applied it so for isometric this is fine but I want the pattern to be a little bit like a smaller so I'll go into our UV again UV editing mode and once selected I'm gonna select these two edges and see by pulling which way it does go so we're gonna do this and we're gonna do this a little and we're gonna increase the floor here we go We should also rotate this to like match what we have on the UV editing tool. Okay, so something like this. Something just like this. Okay, once that's done, what we're gonna do is select all this 
and find out where our UV is that's that's the whole UV of it this this face and this face so we're gonna go into materials our wall material and assign once that's done you're gonna see the pattern also appearing here so we're gonna pull this and rotate this to face our other UV layout and basically uh, use part of the thing to like we can rotate this just make sure the margin of pattern looks nice that's that's all you have to do it doesn't look out of place that's it okay so once that's done we're gonna go into our edit mode again and go into layout mode and voila you have your walls and floor ready now what we need to do is <clears throat> also for like uh, renderings sake what we're gonna do is select this again go into our edit mode select all these top uh, faces so that they don't appear odd and everything and just apply the wall material it doesn't matter like what it looks like I would like this to like be black uh, so <clears throat> click a uh, click assign and go into your UV mode and it's and uh, go into your UV editing and just put them on the black spectrum of the wallpaper like this so that they appear black you can also apply a material and just assign it just like any other any of the materials we have applied on the same same object going to layout okay this is this is fine this is fine this is fine now see these tiny dots that we missed the face we need to put our wood material there again going to edit mode click this select this two with shift so that they apply both okay and we are done apply our wooden floor material there and we are done okay yeah, from a distance it'll look fine okay now once that's done we want another wood uh, we want another wood say uh, texture for our table so let's get that bit man I've been making this tutorial for the last three days I, I, I thought it's gonna be like 20 minutes long it's like going way beyond 20 minutes and like I don't know how far I can pull this off but please bear with me this will be worth it okay so let's find a wood wood material wood texture seamless okay I'm looking for a gray one let's see, let's let's apply a gray one okay so let's use uh, it's a bit too dark uh, let's remember some of them will say it's, it's uh, like seamless sometimes they are not by the way to detect it is look at the end and look at the other end and you'll see if they tile or not you need tileable textures okay so here is myfreetextures.com and I'm gonna download this wood texture from this place save it doesn't have to be high resolution and once it's done we're gonna select this and select create a new material called our table material table material if you haven't guys guys if you haven't subscribed I would love for you to subscribe to my channel and uh, it doesn't feel right to say subscribe to my channel but you know I w really want to make a living out of this and it would be really helpful if you guys uh, give me a subscribe okay to my channel I'll really try to bring more organized content and in a much shorter time the black one doesn't look bad I mean it's a missing texture of course right here but it doesn't look that bad but from a distance it will look like a void that's what I'm afraid of but in real life this will look really cool once you have the neon glow and everything going in there it look really cool maybe we can like apply a bit of texture okay fine let, let's do this so open and go into your downloads or wh wherever you have downloaded your uh, texture and select the texture and as you can see from this uh, bit the UV has been mangled do you know why because uh, first of all we haven't unwrapped this UV 
unwrapping UV is just that we remember we extended this bit extended this bit out and like that's messed up the UV because the geometry has changed from the original and the computer doesn't know handle that yet because well beauty is in the eye of the beholder so okay so this is our table material go into UV editing okay let's fix our view first so that we can see everything properly and select everything on this select all the face UV unwrap once you have unwrapped a smart UV project and it will try blender will try its best to UV project everything and in that in this case this has done a pretty good job all you need to do is go into this UV editor and enlarge it a little so that the pattern becomes like a bit less uh, like pattern becomes a lot looks a lot better okay now let's rotate this for your texture this may not be the case I would suggest that rotate it, rotate it around see which way it looks good all it needs to do is look good in render for example this is fine to me I have like used like a side swipe on it like I have angled it everything is in an angle you can see that okay and it to me it's looking all right but if you want some people don't like it uh, you can make the pattern bigger if you and uh, okay this this looks all right this looks all right okay so let's go into our layout mode and we are in object mode and select this and now we're gonna make it darker like we said so by increasing the metallic you can make it darker and reducing the roughness will create some reflections and everything which most uh, polished uh, wood would already have so this will not look out of place see see what I mean it looks nice now we're gonna add some uh, black uh, leg material for the table black leg you know what just black leg why not so I wanna just give this like a slight not that black just a little bit of gray and a bit more metallic and a little more like reducing the roughness so once you have that select the other leg and select the black leg material do that for the same you can apply all the materials like this for example select all the material select on the unmaterialed components and select the one that's already been material for example this one you can use this drop down and copy material to select it it will apply the last material selected this way you can actually copy a lot of materials onto a lot of objects without having to worry about like doing it each time and every time it's a real time saver but if you don't know how to do that it's always fine to go manually and like select it this way it's fine it will just take more time more time doesn't mean less quality remember somebody can be faster than you but he may produce less quality content than you okay that's not the goal here the goal here is to create quality content even if it takes more time look at people who sold a million dollar worth of nfts he been working on that stuff for like 13 or even more years when i saw cinema 4d i saw people doing that stuff and i learned from people vfx and stuff when i was doing cinema 4d thank god i have blender i don't have to pay thousands of dollars for cinema 4d by the way i'm not dissing cinema 4d cinema 4d is great it's just that their pricing is such a bad thing and octane render uh, let's not even go there it's fast but you know what that's i'm rambling again i'm day so let's not go there so okay now we have our scene like this so once we have this uh, let's apply our let's get a light wood texture that we're gonna apply to these things okay so let's see let's find another texture uh, wood texture wood texture yeah this this looks like a window material it doesn't have to be tiled we're just gonna use the color from it to be honest save okay now we come here and select one of the things on the window frames and we go into uh, here our material panel and create a new called window frame material 
window frame material <clears throat> it's always a wise thing to name your materials correctly you can do it in a hurry and you can name it like this oh, but at the end when you're gonna apply this to something else and you have lots of materials in your scene you're gonna mess up so bad or organizing smart is one of the best ways to be productive that's what i have to say okay so and you can be more creative that way because you can actually come back to your work the next day and actually know what this all about all right so about the frame so we have created a window frame material go into image texture here on your base color and oh, not magic texture although starting to look cool and trippy uh, image texture and open and go into whatever you have downloaded the stuff uh, like this and apply it oh, we apply, mistakenly applied the floor material on that one okay so we like it like we learned we're gonna select all the materials like this all right and select the last material that has the material on it drop down this copy to select it here we go here we go now you have window frames but here is the problem even through the window frames you can see some white stuff is coming out from this end okay we need to either blacken those or increase our frame to fit to fit it so that it looks better so let's see which way can we do it should I increase the frame or introduce a black border on it let's do that let's make our wall let's make our frame bigger but just enough to cover it and not overlap the geometry there we go there we go okay right blender has improved a lot there is no reason to like use any other software at this point you can i'm not shaming other softwares softwares like houdini and everything has its place and is much more mature in what they do in those departments but as a tool if blender was released in the commercial market this would cost like quite a few like thousand dollars per license per user i mean this this is insane amount of like ability in a single package if you even if you buy cinema 40 today the amount of stuff blender has with the add-ons and everything it would cost nearly a million dollars for like with all the add-ons and octane render license and redshift license and everything for a whole studio for just to acquire the software which blender is doing for free thanks to the blender foundation man i owe them a lot thank god and blender now translates perfectly well into unity into unreal engine so game developers are using it it has matured it has matured one of the main complaints was blender hasn't matured it well what else to mature look at 3 max studio only a specialized group of people use 3 max studio and everybody has like with general general purpose 3d 3d things and vfx and everything is slowly gonna transition to blender so it's a very good time to learn blender if you haven't already and if you have wow you're a great person okay so let's make the glass material select the glass and go into material and create a new material call it glass material to be specific create call it window glass material window because if you have other glass material somewhere we're gonna know that this glass material is for the window so for that we're gonna create we'll just click on glass bfdf and reduce the roughness so that it becomes more uh, clean but right now you can see that you cannot see through this glass it's only reflecting the hdri component that's there this is the hdri it's just reflecting this so how do we fix that select the glass go into your material settings and right here is screen space reflection refraction click on that and now you can see through it how do we know you can see the floor from the other side there is nothing on the other side that's why you can see nothing only the reflection in order to increase the roughness you can do this or this and make a clear glass like this 
okay you can also change the glass tint a little like this for example we're gonna give it a little bit of yellowish tint just a tad bit and we have our pretty much scene okay so make sure to turn off screen space uh, refraction on this and also you have a screen space refraction set on the screen space reflection in the uh, render properties right here right here this one on the if panel okay all right so once that's done what we're gonna do is uh, let's move on to the chair so you're still seeing this reflection and you're like okay so like it doesn't look that good later we're gonna put some light behind it an area light which is gonna push some light through this window and like put it on the floor and we're gonna place the lights in such a way it looks cool so we're gonna do do that slowly but for now let's apply the materials on our long awaited hippie seat so go into match select the material for the chair click on new and say call it chair material Uh, use nodes obviously and um, base color to say uh, something like this yeah something like orange how about that something like yellow you know modern chairs are usually yellow and yellow is a light right definition for it okay now you can see some jaggedy edges everywhere like broken like uh, these pieces so what do you do is click on it right click shade is smooth so that will smooth out a lot of the edges okay as you can see we still have some interesting geometry right over here and here in order to fix that although it will not show up in our render in order to fix that let's go into our uh, what is that called our face select mode and select these two phases phases and pull them out a little make sure you are in the local coordinate otherwise you're gonna be pulling in the wrong direction let's pull them a little so that these two small vertices if we go here these two small vertices were inside the other object that doesn't happen okay right going to our select mode we can't actually select this okay cool so here we go here we go normalize it okay see now the problem is gone and you still have the bend that we ever so wanted okay now this uh, this looks all right you can also pull this a little this to sizes sides a little on the front so that it becomes more cushiony or less cushiony you know but never intersect like this that that was the bad thing i was doing earlier ah, so it's cool to play with the things okay so we're gonna leave it at that and click on object mode again we have applied color to it a yellowish color and we have shared this as a smooth and now let's do the bottom we're gonna give it a wood texture we already have say our uh, our window frame material that we used let's see but the window frame material is very light it's not very visible so what we need to do is click on the window frame one of the window frames and <clears throat> click on one of the window frames and uh, go into metallic make it slightly more or less rough so that it like pops out a little bit more than usual this won't do nothing because we have applied a texture on it okay so let's see from a distance does it work we can see some texture on it but it's not very clear let's use another material on it let's see we want the legs to like show well because it's a small detail so let's put on black leg is it visible now it's much better with the black leg how about some table material now that 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 is what we needed that is what we needed but now it looks like it it blends to the floor when we zoom out so let's uh, apply glass 
oh no but see like i was saying before now you can like this this is this is what the glasses become you can see through it to the floor and it is doing the refraction and everything that like real glass does well almost okay so let's do this let's uh, keep it as table material let's see does it work no let's give it a definition let's use black material instead black leg that's better this look like it more popped out with the black than it did with anything any other color or white white looked fine okay now I didn't apply all the materials at once I did it the manual way so just to show you guys that you can really with good speed you can do this nah to me it looks fine it's fine it looks fine it's fine okay so let's do the shelves shall we select the shelf select one of the select the floor material then just apply it voila if the texture isn't nice just go into your smart uh, uv editing and fix your uv just like we did before okay or just use a single color that way you don't have to uv it all right so our mouse pad what can our mouse pad have so let's see let's apply a material say yellow and so that our mouse is actually stands out it does it does stand out okay let's make our mouse black does it stand out now yeah it does okay now let's uh, use we are using contrasting colors this is what we are using so we're gonna use a yellow back end let's see does it look okay it looks all right from a distance we need to increase the size of the keyboard but we'll do that a bit later because you have to apply a lot of materials to these keys and we're gonna do that soon okay so we can let's see let's apply another material black let's see how it looks black looks more defined how about black with yellow keys let's see how they look all right black with yellow keys seem to work so we're gonna color all the keys the same so what we're gonna do is select all the colors i mean the buttons because they are separate objects remember and we're gonna join them select all of them right click and join now they are a single material now and you can move them around like this so first thing we're gonna do is select both and increase the size of it so that it looks uh, very increase the height a little so that you're gonna for, for isometric view you're gonna get this much view and it must be very visible that that's a keyboard and that's a mouse from a distance so that's why you need to make them a bit bigger than they're actually in real life <laughs> it's about low details okay so we're gonna select both and just rotate this a little so that it looks like it's being used or something that way let's see how it looks looks about right looks about right how about we rotate it the other way like you know make it a little, little less cr more uh, more crooked so that like it looks more organic in this the listen looks more organic it doesn't look machined okay You may have the mouse pad that way, but you'll always have the mouse this way. Right? Am I right? Okay. So, uh, let's give it a yellow color and let's step back and see how it looks. It looks all right. It looks all right. Let's do a reverse and check. So, a lot of 3D is doing and seeing if it looks good. There's, there's no one fit solution and like, oh, okay, this is done. So, we can see that this doesn't look nice. So, what we go do is undo and uh, we go back to our old one 
so we're going to increase the height of the buttons a bit more so that it is it's more prominent from the uh, view screen from the camera when we're going to place the camera okay let's see yeah now it looks a lot better okay so let's do our monitor uh, select our monitor go into edit mode and create a new material called uh, LED frame material LED frame material okay and make this black see you have only one thing and it will apply to the whole thing right so LED material now we don't we want we want something in this screen like a w Linux wallpaper or something so we're gonna create another thing and LED and name it another material and name it uh, LED back panel material you can name it however you like and select assign okay all right now you can see that our black uh, it's very the frame is not very visible with because our uh, wallpaper and the back is black and the black is blending with the black is black frame of the thing so we need to change the frame color LED frame material change it to say yellow and step back and see how it looks it doesn't look nice how about some white how about some white and we do the black inside just uh, just for testing let's see no that still doesn't look good let's see what will actually look good okay so how about the frame the frame would be let's see wood wooden frame LCD ah, that looks cool from a distance though nah, from a distance you can't even understand what this is so how about glass not enough space for reflection to show up refraction to show up how about some oh cool wall material okay for now we're gonna keep this as a uh, LED black material we're gonna apply some glow later on the side to make it look better that's what I think we should do okay okay now for our picture frames our picture frames that we have made okay so First of all, what we're gonna do is select this one, apply a scale. As we can see, the scale wasn't applied like this, and apply a scale. So it will put everything to one. Now you can UV this nicely. When you go into edit mode and select inset, it will inset properly. Oh, okay, we are inserting not all the faces, only the front faces. So you're gonna inset it properly. Okay, make it this much all right and say extrude and push it inwards a little bit like this and now you have nice picture frames for your walls so click on edit mode and <clears throat> create a new material let it be say floor material and it will have a wooden frame and the middle bit will have let's name it frame one and we're gonna assign it okay now for the sake of ease we're gonna delete this one and just duplicate this one right next to it so that we don't have to do all that work all over again but what we're gonna do different is select go here and remove this material for this select another material and frame two we gotta do this much because this is gonna have uh, to two different images unless you can pack the two images into a single image you have to do this that's why many games have like lots of sprite sheets uh, only one sprite chips with lots of stuff in the single image back in the day okay so select this select frame to click assign and go into object mode and we are done okay now this is this is this looks like our scene and I'm starting to not like this chair color let's see if we can give it something better hmm. 
okay so we're gonna remove the chair material and create a new material called and call it like uh, chair 2 material here you go I'm starting to mess up with the naming conventions okay and make it like red let's see what color looks good oh this looks this looks good this looks all right this looked all right just rotate around see which color is looks good on this on your image for the chair okay this looks all right does it yeah how about a lime chair usually these chairs are lime in color the problem with this is the thing doesn't have any definition for shadow to like appear it's just a smooth surface and like outwards facing outwards it doesn't it is not having any reflections or capturing anything that's why it looks odd if we increase the metallic a little definition starts to show up now it looks all right okay this is what i actually wanted okay maybe we can go back to yellow uh, yeah okay yeah a red yeah this looks this looks fine this looks all right okay i'm spending way more time you know one thing again i gotta st i gotta stop that okay all right we're good i increase the roughness a little and uh, increase the metallic so that uh, shadow definition right here shows up as you can see before with the yellow material it wasn't now it is and uh, that's what we that's what we wanted okay so for the next bit we're gonna apply <coughs> find a linux upper screen like a terminal or something okay like this that looks like it's all cool and stuff okay of course he's not looking at the stock market which is it isn't bad in any way okay so this is very defined i want this this is very defined i mean anybody who knows linux we're gonna look at this and instantly know oh, okay he's running terminal or something or app to get to move or other linux commands this is fine we're gonna use this one i like it you can use whatever you feel like it's fine go into material led back panel base color image texture open what is downloads yeah okay and like go into this and uh, okay now we have to fix our uv so go into uv editing select our panel come to our uv screen see where it's at it's about here so what we need to do is actually first orient the side okay this is not this is not the way but this is the way see the text is aligning up nicely okay so all we need to do is place all this in the proper corners and we are good to go uh, see you're filling the whole screen quite easily Once all the four corners are placed, we can actually drag and decrease size and increase size to like give it more definition. But for now, I don't see any reason to do that. It's starting to look all right. Yeah, now it looks like a Linux screen. Cool. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with the wings. Oh my God. Okay. So. All right, so uh, let's LED back panel material. Let's see, increase the metallic on this a little and uh, reduce the roughness so that it actually like reflects a little, but not that much. Okay. Okay, save. Done. Go into your layout mode. Now we're going to create the glow we talked about. So select this, create on, go to on uh, edit mode 
and go into like a loop cut and create a small loop cut around the end just like this and uh, select face mode and select the following faces there we go here we go select the following faces and create a new material called led glow back so right now what we need to do is assign this material and you had it has assigned it it's white so it's because it become white but we want it to glow before that make sure in ev settings render settings here render properties here you have bloom enabled because the glow will require the bloom to show up on the screen okay go into material again and uh, look for something called uh, emission strength increase the emission strength and emission color and once you increase it see it starts to glow so we're gonna give it a nice glow of say purple or something like this or green okay since the screen is green okay so a little bit of yellow maybe okay all right but not too much okay just to highlight that that's the lcd we're talking about okay what happens if we increase the glow a lot as soon as you're out of its view it's gonna glow like this all around and once you go into render mode it's gonna glow like this based on your current settings for the lights and everything on the scene if we go into cycles it's gonna glow a lot more because the, it, it is going to bounce that light all around later okay so we get out of cycles we go into eve and we go and select this and select our go into a shading mode select our material and reduce the glow a lot to say 10 10 even 10 is a lot let's say 5 okay let's change the glow color to something more soothing okay how about a bit of blue that's good enough okay once that's done, what we're gonna do is put some pictures on, on, on our frame. So our first frame is gonna be GTA SA Mom. Beverly Johnson. Mom. Picture. Texture. Where is the mother texture? <laughs> wanted this to do this. Okay, so... Uh, CJ mom image face that's not CJ's mom okay you know what Carl Johnson I'm gonna put a picture of Carl Johnson right in there I'm gonna save this image click on this and we also already have created frame one image texture open downloads and we're gonna find CJ's head okay now we're gonna go into our edit mode and say UV editing and we're gonna fix it so first we're gonna take this to right about here and then we're gonna extend this here and we then we're gonna push this here Moms, no. Okay. Hey, Steve J. What you up to? And I miss San Andreas. I miss being a kid. Okay. So now we have CJ's face, and let's go into object mode. And now you have CJ's face right there. Okay now we're gonna have the face of say big smoke e, e, this is what we want big smoke i'm gonna select this and uh, we already have created our frame too i'm gonna go into our image texture and click on open 
and click on downloads did all have I downloaded big smoke yet no okay Wow We're straight from the source baby save image JPG okay now will we able to see it downloads let's see let's see okay we have we have big smoke in the house go into edit mode select this face so same as before increase this increase this about here we don't need the whole thing we need to have a proportion of the uv to this and now rotate this okay this way that looks about right but we have messed up the uv so let's fix that there we go two of the greatest men who ever lived big smoke and cj and some burgers and the clock and bell why not okay all right okay yeah all right okay so go into object mode and uh, what we're gonna do is go into our layout mode again and now we have some books to render books to like uh, do something about it so what we're gonna do is find some book cover simulations and simulacra we're gonna get a cover for this and we're gonna create a new material you don't need to really rename these materials because well this is like one-off materials image texture open downloads do all that simulations and simulacra messed up horribly the UV apply a scale and uh, UV editing and if we come here we select the front and we see we have to do the UV thing I know it may look like a pain but well this is what 3d designing is all about taking pain like John Wayne on rain I don't really know who John Wayne is there's a chance no there's no John Wayne okay so right okay now we have simulations and simulacra I'm slowly losing my mind yay okay now you have this book but the side looks like it's not like a paper thing so we're gonna fix that I'm gonna select this side and the top and the bottom and we're gonna just push it somewhere around here to be as wide as possible okay and rotate this let it have some like texture we just need some like little bit of texture out there that's it layout okay so now you have one book done okay now we're gonna have another book what we gonna do is remove a couple of these books and duplicate this go into our global settings and have a couple of these And have a bit of variation somewhere from here and we're gonna delete this one and this one and copy this place it properly right about here how about another one another one see I'm just checking for any duplicates I have created that I have not have moved okay so negative 90 degrees to be perfect and put it inside that's it I told you to keep a gap to like have like all the shadows and everything 
Okay, let's get another book. Say, uh, Neuromancer. Neuromancer. Okay, we're gonna have this. Oh, this looks way cool than what we just selected. I. This is gonna take so much time to download. I'm just gonna use this one. So let's apply this on this one. New base color, image texture, open downloads. Where is what is this? JFFIF? No, that's not gonna work. We need a JPEG. We need a JP. Yeah. We need a JP. Yeah, this will do. From Reddit. Still JFFIF. I don't, I don't want to convert this. I just want a JPG. Can we download this? Yes, this is a JPG. Okay. So once we have that, see, it takes a lot of patience. Once we have that, ah, this already looking good. Okay, we're gonna have a part of that. That's a book. We're gonna just create a new material and uh, apply this. This looks all right too. We're gonna apply this to this too. New material and we're gonna apply this too. And uh, we're gonna properly frame the this one. This one is not needed. We're gonna we're gonna delete the top one so that people can see the simulations and simulacra. And what we're gonna do is have this one that. And since we're gonna take a close-up shot, we're gonna take we're gonna do this right with just this one. Select the sides. We don't select the bottom side really. So what we need to do here, since we have selected the sides, we are gonna assign a white material to it. Assign a white material to it and select the front and go into UV editing and have the whole face there, basically. Also, we need to rotate this, I can see that. Here we go, here we go. Here we go. Now oh, it's very visible. Okay, save. Object mode and go into our layout mode. And that's about it. Okay, now we have done it. Uh, okay, now let's talk about rendering. So what we're gonna do is go into our render mode and everything gonna go away soon so what we need to do is add a light to the scene so we're gonna make an area light we're gonna bring it here and we're gonna pull this this way through the window just like this it's gonna come through the window that's what I plan to do let's see how much of that will be successful though So the initial plan of having plants and all that so we're not doing that much but you can put some plants to make it more decorative and the scene to look a lot better it's a lot it, it, it has a lot of negative space here and a lot of like stuff here so like you can fill this up with some plants here and there and it will look a lot better maybe a console TV here and everything but remember the isometry why did I like keep it on this corner because I'm gonna place the camera here so that everything is clear over there I don't want obstructions in the way okay so once it's selected what we're gonna do is change our Eve to if you want to take a screenshot using Eve you can just add a couple of lights to this or like just take a screenshot from the uh, turn this off and this off and go into uh, render viewport image render viewport render image well, with your camera settings and you can have this this is a pretty good render all you need to do is increase the samples for it 
which is here uh, viewport keep the denoising on but if you don't want eve without the shadow with you want cycles what you need to do is place all that so we're gonna turn this back on for us so that we can get back to work okay so light let's increase it to 100 watts and select our cycles and select I'm gonna select GPU compute so that it becomes a lot faster okay now we can see that the thing I was talking about the stuff will come through the window is happening right about here because of path tracing and uh, okay it's not very intense it's not very intense so we're gonna make it more intense and uh, since the color color of the glass is I've put a ye little yellow tint in everything is a bit yellow so I'm gonna make it white again go towards the white okay so yeah all right so let's increase this to say a 500 watt okay I think that would do now we're gonna copy this light place it here place it make it a bit bigger rotate this downwards or like from a different angle and we're gonna light the scene from an angle like this we're gonna copy it again place it right above pull it upwards and somewhere around there somewhere around there is nice I'm gonna use another one just duplicated another one just for the purpose of lighting from another angle and we can now change values and see what works and what not okay I can see it's a bit dark from the top so I'm gonna increase some lights from the top say something like this say uh, I'm increase the light a lot more Something like 500 watts or a thousand hmm okay the light from the top is fine now but the light from the window is not so we need to increase that a lot more so let's say a thousand two thousand okay that looks all right and from the side I'm gonna change the color to slightly yellow and uh, let's increase this to say a thousand Let's increase this to say 5000. Okay. Right, okay. Alright, starting to look okay. So I'm gonna pause the video and come back to you once rendered. But before doing that, here is what I'm gonna do. We're gonna place our most important thing, an isometric camera on the scene. So what how how do you do that? And and uh, go into camera once you have the camera click on view and camera to view and click this uh, toggle the camera view once you have the camera view you can actually frame your stuff just like you do you will do in the final render and uh, go into and have a square proportion for example say 1500 by 1500 pixels okay isometric is very good for that and right now the camera is not in isometric mode so select your camera right here you can also uh, get out of the camera mode by clicking this button and now from a distance you can see what the camera was created okay click on that again frame the camera and uh, go into your camera and from perspective to select orthographic okay select orthographic okay so once you have orthography you can see the ortho uh, you can control this one 
to like zoom in and zoom out like uh, orthographic whatever this is orthographic scale okay let's see how much of orthographic scale do we need this much is fine I wish I could yeah okay all right so I want it to have some angle some depth so place it like this and we're gonna render our image out okay so I can see the CJ and all that face isn't that clear so I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger you can see my CPU humming and going crazy because it's a GTX 1070 and not some crazy stuff no crazy Nvidia stuff here so we need to increase the glow on the LED on the back panel because we have added so much light to the scene it's not actually affecting it like too much anymore so I'm gonna increase it 10 I'm gonna change the color of it to say transmission color to what looks good yellow yeah yellow I'm gonna increase it to 15 so that it bounces everywhere and it looks cool okay so that's about it I'll come back to you once it's being rendered okay so um, <clears throat> so what we need to do so okay so how to render this actually so stop this render and click on render and render image and let's start the rendering process like this okay but you see you're gonna see a lot of dots and stuff in order to take care of all that what you can do is increase the render path tracing to say 1024 and that's about it so you, you, just, you just need more samples for the resolution you're gonna give so just render the image and sit tight and let it do its thing <clears throat> okay now we can see our scene has rendered and that's about it thank you for watching this tutorial I know it's a bit long but it's a tutorial series and I'll already told you that I'll try to optimize and keep it like short from now on and we th that's about it now what we did a mistake right here that we're gonna fix right now is on the frames we have a black border we didn't wanted this that's because I selected the sides and applied the materials on it so what we're gonna do we're gonna fix it right now and how do you do that is get out of the camera view <coughs> and like we're in the orthographic camera so yeah we gotta get out of the orthographic camera first okay so let's go into our yeah rendering with Eevee is fine too it looks pretty good you don't have to use cycles <coughs> so select edit mode and select all these frames and go into your material frame assign that's not the frame that's that is the f okay frame material and assign sometimes going between cycles and Eve can have these small uh, graphical problems but it's okay it's nothing you can you cannot take care of it's fine so select the frame and assign assign it although we have assigned it as base material sometimes it may not apply so that's why I'm saying that okay let's see so I'm gonna reduce the thing to like uh, see a quicker preview going to play okay and now I think it has fixed it so thank you for watching this tutorial I hope you will I can bring you some more tutorials in the future thank you